GPS units like the GTN650 or 750 can compute descent rates based on altitude constraints at certain points along a flight path. These are programmed in automatically when you load an instrument arrival or approach. But you could create your own vertical navigation profile on even a VFR flight to help with descent planning. Here we're planning a flight across Long Island from Montauk to Farmingdale. We'll start by setting up our flight plan. We'll add our destination KFRG to go along with our origin point Montauk, which is already in there. We'd like to plan a descent that gets us to pattern altitude two miles before reaching the airport. So we tap the altitude box and tap the blank altitude. Let's use AGL and set 1000 feet and tap enter. Now let's tap the along track box and set it to two miles before, then tap save. It's created a new waypoint along our course that's two miles from Farmingdale and now has an altitude constraint of 1080 MSL. As we fly along, let's say at a westbound VFR cruising altitude of 6,500, the unit computes a point where we should begin our descent. This is indicated as TOD, top of descent. Looking where this is, we see it's a few miles before we overfly Islip Airport, a class Charlie. How do we know we could begin our descent here and not fly into the Charlie airspace, which starts at 4,100 feet? Let's set a new waypoint, this time Islip Airport, which is right on our course. We tap that waypoint we created two miles before Farmingdale, tap insert before and enter KISP. Now tap that altitude box. We're gonna set the top of the class Charlie airspace, 4,100 feet. And the constraint is we need to be at or above this altitude, but it's not enough to maintain this at Islip. We have to hold it through the end of the lateral limits of the class Charlie, which is about nine miles from the field. So we set the along track as nine miles after. This creates a new waypoint after Islip now. When we remove the constraint from the Islip waypoint, it'll use our current altitude of 6,500. We now have a top of descent computed after the field, instead of before it where it was earlier. This will ensure that if we wait till here to start coming down, we won't fall into the Charlie airspace. Descents are calculated using a standard 3D reglide path. We could see this if we go into the flight plan and tap menu, then VNAV. It shows that our three degree path angle at our current speed, which is 150 knots, will require a 796 foot per minute descent. And it computes our time to top a descent as well at around 20 minutes. The rest is pretty simple. As we skip ahead to overflying Islip, the unit announces one minute to top a descent. And at that point, we could start down. We could pair this with an EFIS to get a glide path to follow, as well as an autopilot that can handle vertical navigation. Notice the waypoint for nine miles beyond Islip is up, where we should hit 4100. After that point, our descent continues at the same rate, ending at the bottom of descent BOD, which is 1080 feet, two miles from our destination airport. Try it out a few times with a simulator until you're comfortable using it in flight.